Hi friends, welcome to all. In this video, we are going to discuss CCNA version 7 packet tracer activity investigate a VLAN implementation. Before coming to this activity, if you like to get CCNA version 7 online classes or if you like to contact our team for any project support, you can visit our website. Link you will get from the description below. And also, if you like to get this type of technical videos in future, consider subscribing. Also, don't forget to enable that bell icon near to the subscribe button so that you will get notification message whenever we upload a new video. Now, back to our activity. Here we can see our addressing table with devices, interface and its IP address, submit to mask and the default gateway. The objectives. Observe broadcast traffic in a VLAN implementation and observe broadcast traffic without VLANs. Background In this activity, we will observe how broadcast traffic is forwarded by the switches and when VLANs are configured and when VLANs are not configured. Coming to the instructions In part 1, observe broadcast traffic in a VLAN implementation. Step 1 Ping from PC1 to PC6. Coming to our topology, here we can see our PC1, also we can see our PC6 here, PC6 and here is PC1, we are going to ping from PC1 to this PC6. Wait for all the links lights to turn to green. To accelerate this process, click fast forward time located in the bottom toolbar. Ok, now here everything in green color, otherwise we can press this. Uh, fast forward time uh, here. Now click the simulation tab and use the add symbol PDU tool. Click PC1 and then click PC6. Okay, we will go to simulation tab. Now we are in real time. We will click on this simulation and we just close this simulation panel. Now we will select this add symbol PDU. Then we will click on PC1, then on PC6. Then click the capture bar forward button to step through the process. Observe the ARP request as they traverse the network. When the buffer full window appears, click the view previous events button. Okay, we will do that. Here we can see uh, two PDUs. We will click capture bar forward and we can see this ARP goes to S2, goes to S1, okay, and here we can see ICMB failed. Where the pings successful? Explain. So here we can see uh, that ICMB packet dropped from that PC1 itself. Why it is failed? Uh, because maybe this PC1 and uh, this PC6 are in different VLAN. Uh, we can verify that. Uh, here we can see PC1 is in uh, fast thread 0 slash 11. Just we will verify our uh, VLAN. Enable show VLAN brief and uh, we will verify this interface. We can see interface fast thread 0 slash 11 which is in VLAN 10. Okay. Now here coming to PC6 connected to fast thread 0 slash 6. Enable show VLAN brief and uh, we will find this port fast thread 0 slash 6. And we can see this fast thread 0 slash 6 is in uh, VLAN 30. That means PC1 uh, is in VLAN 10 and uh, PC6 in VLAN 30. And here we can see they labeled that VLAN 10 and VLAN 30. In this topology, we are not using any layer 3 devices, uh, so inter VLAN communication is not possible. Next is a look at the simulation panel where did S3 send the packet after receiving it. Okay, now just we can go back to this backward. We can see from S1 it goes to S3. Then from S1, one message go to PC3 because these PCs are in the same VLAN. VLAN 10, here we can see VLAN 10, PC7 7 also in VLAN 10. Then here we can see this PC4 also in VLAN 10. 
so this ARP is sent to this uh, PCs. But this PC4 and PC7 are not the uh, destination we given, it's PC6. That's why this ARP uh, dropped by this PCs, PC4 and PC7. In normal operation, when a switch receives a broadcast frame on one of its ports, it forwards the frame out all other ports. Notice that S2 only sends the ARP request out faster than 0 slash 1 to S1. Also notice that S3 only sends the ARP request out faster than 0 slash 11 to PC4 because they are the same VLAN, VLAN 10. PC1 and PC4 both are belong to VLAN 10, yes. PC6 belongs to VLAN 30 because broadcast traffic is contained within the VLAN PC6 never receives the ARP request from PC1. Because PC4 is not the destination, it discards the ARP request. The ping from PC1 fails because PC1 never receives an ARP replay from PC6. Yes, this is the explanation. So coming to step 2, ping from PC1 to PC4. Okay. Click the new button under the scenario 0 drop down tab. Now click on the Add a symbol PDU icon on the right side of the packet tracer and ping from PC1 to PC4. Okay, we will do that. We will maximize our uh, packet tracer. And uh, here we can see, maybe if it is uh, hidden, uh, you can expand it using this uh, left arrow. And here we can see the scenario. We will click on new. Then we will uh, resize it. In this scenario, we are going to uh, send uh, I mean, we are going to add a simple PDU from this PC1 to uh, this uh, PC4 and these two PCs, PC1 and PC4 are in the same VLAN, in VLAN 10. We will click on this add symbol PDU, then coming to PC1, then we will click on uh, PC4. Click the capture bar forward button to step through the process. Observe the ARP requests as they traverse the network. When the buffer full window appears, click the view previous events button. Where the ping successful? Explain. We have to verify whether uh, it will succeed or not. So we will click on capture bar forward and we can see this ARP goes to S2, then it goes to S1, then we can see one goes to PC7 because PC7 also in VLAN 10 and then uh, one goes to uh, S3, this is a switch, then it goes to PC4 and we can see this PC4 is giving uh, ARP uh, back to this uh, PC1, the MAC address of this PC4 uh, to this PC1 because PC4 is the destination, okay, now uh, goes back as a unicast communication to PC1 Yes, 2 then to PC1 and we can see PC1 received the MAC address of PC4. Again we will click capture bar forward so we can see this ICMP uh, go goes to its destination then on S1 then S3 then to PC4 so he received the ICMP now he uh, sent back the acknowledgement to PC1 and here we can see uh, it succeeded. Examine the simulation panel. When the packet reached S1, why does it also forward the packet to PC7? We can see this PC7 is also in VLAN 10 and that's why uh, this ARP uh, broadcast to uh, this uh, same VLAN. Uh, in PC7. Coming to part 2, observe broadcast traffic without VLANs. Step 1, clear the configurations on all three switches and delete the VLAN database. Return to real-time mode, ok we will do that. Then uh, delete the startup configuration on all three switches. What command is used to delete the startup configuration of the switches? Obviously, we can use uh, erase command uh, to uh, delete this uh, startup configuration. Where is the VLAN file stored in the switches? 
Usually VLAN file is uh, stored in the uh, flash memory. Now we will uh, delete the startup configuration on all these three switches. Coming to S2, CLI. Here we will check the erase command and here we can see that erase startup config. Erase contents of uh, configuration memory. Okay, then press enter. Confirm again press enter. Initialize to the geometry of NVRAM. Okay, and here we can see arrays of NVRAM complete. Now we will go to S1 CLI arrays startup config confirm. Again we will go to S3 CLI arrays startup config confirm. Yes. Next is a delete the VLAN file on all three switches. What command deletes the VLAN file stored in the switches? Yes, already we told uh, this VLAN file is stored in flash and we can delete that using the delete command. We will come to S2 and here we will give a show flash and here we can see that uh, VLAN file with ex extension dot dat. We can delete this uh, file using delete vlan dot dat then press enter so delete file name vlan dot dat again press enter delete flash vlan dot dat again we uh, confirmation okay again press enter here they prompted uh, this confirmation two times okay now we will go to yes one here we will uh, delete that uh, file delete vlan dot that file now we will go to s3 cli delete vlan dot that after this we have to reload these uh, switches reload the switches use the reload command in privileged exit mode to reset all the switches wait for the entire link to turn green to accelerate this process, click fast forward time located in the bottom yellow toolbar. Now in this new packet tracer version, uh, this color is not yellow, it's uh, uh, blue. Here we can see that button. We will go to each switches and we will reload it. Yes, two and here we will give reload. Confirm. Now we will go to S1 and uh, reload it. Confirm. Now we will go to S3 CLI Reload. Now here we can see all the links are up here. Uh, in step 3, click capture bar forward to send ARP request and pings. After the switches reload and the link lights return to green. The network is ready to forward your ARP and the ping traffic. Now select scenario 0 from the drop down tab to return to scenario 0. We can do that. We will maximize this packet tracer and uh, here we will select scenario 0. Okay. Then uh, from simulation mode, click the capture bar forward button to step through the process. Notice that the switches now forward the ARP request out all ports except the port on which the ARP request was received. This default action of a switches is why VLANs can improve network performance. Broadcast traffic is contained within each VLAN. When the buffer full window appears, click the view previous events button. Okay, we will do that. We will go to simulation mode and uh, we will close the simulation panel so that we can view this topology fully. We will click on capture bar forward and here we can see uh, that ARP goes to S2. Then it broadcasted to all the devices, VLAN, I mean PC2, PC3 and to this S1. And here again broadcasted to all the PCs and then to this S3 then to all these PCs but still we can see this PC1 drops uh, this ICMB packet 
now all the devices are in the default vlan but uh, the ip address for this pc1 and this pc6 they are in different networks that's why this icmp failed now we have some reflection questions here if a pc in vlan 10 sends a broadcast message which devices receive it uh, obviously uh, this message will receive all the devices uh, those who are in vlan 10 only in the same way if a pc in a vlan 20 and vlan 30 sends a broadcast message which device receive it obviously uh, if uh, vlan 20 sends then only uh, the de devices which are in vlan 20 will receive this message in the same way vlan 30 sends the broadcast message all the devices that are on vlan 30 will receive uh, this uh, message Next is, uh, what happens to a frame sent from a PC in VLAN 10 to a PC in VLAN 30? Yes, so previously we have seen it will drop because uh, the one PC is in VLAN 10 and the other one is in VLAN 30. And one thing we have to keep in mind, it will not happen uh, if we configured uh, inter-VLAN routing using a layer 3 uh, devices. Okay. Now, in terms of ports, what are the collision domains on the switch? Usually, in switch, each port is a separate collision domain. That means, just consider a switch uh, which got uh, 26 ports. That means, 26 separate collision domain. Coming to the final question. In terms of ports, what are the broadcast domains on the switch? Obviously, they are divided by the number of VLANs in the switch. And here we can see in this topology, we have uh, three uh, VLANs, VLAN 10, VLAN 20 and VLAN 30. So here we have uh, three broadcast domains. Okay, that's all uh, in this uh, packet tracer activity uh, that is investigate a VLAN implementation. Dear friends, if you have any doubt, any suggestions regarding this video or any other technical points, uh, you can comment below or you can contact our team using our website. Stay tuned and we will meet again with the next video. Thank you.